Hello everybody, we're going to review or go over lesson 5.2, Factors and Divisibility. We're on page 205 of your fourth grade textbook. Our essential question today is how can you tell whether one number is a factor of another number? Students in Carlo's art class painted 32 square tiles for a mosaic. They will arrange the tiles to make a rectangle. Can the rectangle have 32 tiles arranged into three equal rows without gaps or overlaps? So we're going to try to arrange the tiles into three equal rows. All right, so we have three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, twenty one, twenty four, twenty seven, thirty. But I can't put another row of three because that would be thirty three. So a rectangle cannot have 32 tiles arranged into three rows. So that tells me that three is not a factor of 32. So if three is a factor of 32, then the unknown factor in three times something equals 32 is a whole number. So we can also divide, so this is the other way, so we can draw a picture and share them. We can also divide, and we know that three times one is three. So I can put one ten in each group of th in the three groups. No tens left to share. And I have two ones left to share. I can't share those two ones with anything, so into the three groups. So that I'm gonna have to put zero ones. And zero times three is zero, remainder two. So the unknown factor in three times something equals thirty-two is not. A whole number is not a whole number. So a rectangle cannot have cannot have tiles, have 32 tiles arranged into three rows. Alright, how explain how you can tell if four is a factor of 30. Well, you can divide 30 by 4. Divide 30 by 4. And if the quotient is a whole number, I'm sorry, if the quotient is not a whole number, it's not a factor. With nothing left over, It is not a factor of 30. Okay, so if we divide 30 by 4, I can't share three tens into four groups. So I'm going to think of the three tens as 30 ones, and I don't have any other ones. The closest I can get to 30. Multiplying by fours is four times seven. Four times seven is 28. That leaves me two. Well, there's no other numbers to bring down, so seven remainder two. So our quotient is not a whole number with nothing left over. So four is not a factor of 30. All right, so page 206, the visibility rules. I think these are going to be very valuable to you. And a number is divisible by another number if the quotient is a counting number and the remainder is zero. Some numbers have a divisibility rule. You can use a divisibility rule to tell whether one number is a factor of another. 
And so these are the basic rules that will help make finding factors easier and more efficient. Any number has two as a factor if the other number is even. Any number is divisible by three if the sum of the digits is divisible by three. And I'll, we'll do some examples of this to show what we mean by sum of the digits. Five, any number is divisible by five if the number ends in zero or five. Six, we know six is, a number is divisible by six if the number is even and divisible by three. In other words, if the number is divisible by three and two, it's also divisible by six. And then nine, if the sum of the digits is divisible by nine, then that larger number is divisible by nine. So let's try some of these. Let's test for divisibility by six. Is 72 even? Yes. What is the sum of the digits of 72? Seven, two. Seven plus two is nine. Is the sum of the digits divisible by three? Is nine divisible by three? Yes. So, 72 is even, which means it's divisible by two, and it's also, the sum of its digits is also divisible by three. So if the number is divisible by three and two, it's also divisible by six. So six is a factor of 72. All right, let's try some more. List the factor pairs for 72 in the table. All right, so we know one times 72. Two. Well, what's 72 divided by two? How many two, how many tens can I put into two groups evenly? I can put three. All right, so that leaves me one ten. That I'll exchange for ten ones. So now I have 12 ones into two groups. I can even put those in evenly in six groups. Six times two is 12. All right, so two and 36 equals 72. So another factor pair is two and 36. Now will three work? Well, we already checked that one. Seven plus two is nine. Nine can be divided by three. So three will work. Three, 72 divided by three. I have seven tens into three groups. I can put two into each group. You give me one ten to share. I'm going to trade that for ten ones. Now I have twelve ones. Twelve ones divided by three gives me four. Four times three is twelve. So three and twenty-four. All right, is four a factor of seventy-two? Well, they didn't give us a divisibility rule for four, but seventy-two is even. So it may be divisible by 72, uh, by four. I can share one ten into each of the four groups, leaving me three. I bring down the two ones that I have. 32 ones divided by four is eight. So yes, four and 18 equals 72. Now I can skip five because this doesn't end in a five or a zero. Six. I know six works. I know that six times 12 is 72. Oh, uh, not four and 72, four and 18. Sorry about that. Four and 18, six and 12. Will seven work? Well, seven times 10 is 70. So there's no way to get 72 from seven. Eight, you should know that eight works. Eight times nine is 72. Let's say you weren't sure. Well, what's 7 plus 2? 7 plus 2 is 9. Is 9 divisible by 9? Yes. So 72 is divisible by 9. 8 and 9. How did you check if 7 is a factor of 72? Well, 7 times 10 equals 70. If you add 
one more seven. You get 77. You don't count 72 when count by when counting by sevens. Okay. All right. 207. All right. Is four a factor of 28? Draw a model to help. Okay. Um, hopefully you recognize that four times seven is 28. So we should know automatically that this is going to work. But if we didn't know, we would make rows of four. Okay. 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, 28. Okay. Four rows of 7, 28. So 4 is a factor of 28. Is 5 a factor of the number? So we're looking at these numbers here and just asking ourselves, can 5 be a factor of it? 27 does not end in a 5 or a 0. No. 30 ends in a 0. Yes. 36 does not end in a 5 or a 0. No. 53 does not end in a 5 or a 0. No. Is 9 a factor of the number? 5 plus 4 equals 9. Is 9 divisible by 9? Yes. So 54 is divisible by 9. 63. 6 plus 3 equals 9. Is 9 divisible by 9? Yes. So 63 is divisible by 9. 67. 6 plus 7 is 13. Is 13 divisible by 9? No. So 67 is not divisible by 9. 93. 9 plus 3 equals 12. Is 12 divisible by 9? No. So 93 is not divisible by 9. Number 10. List the factors of 24. Okay, well, we always know 1 and and that number will work. So we have to list 1 and 24. Now I know 2 definitely has to work because 24 is even. So 24 divide by 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So I have no 10s left to share. I have 4 1s left. 4 shared with 2 groups would be 2 into each group. Leaving me 0. So 2 in 12 equals 24. All right, how about three? Well, two plus four is six. So I took the numbers, the digits in 24, two plus four is six, and I'm gonna ask myself, can six be divided by three? Yeah. So 24 is divisible by three. Three times eight. All right, and four. I shouldn't have to test four. That should, we should know that four times six is 24. Okay, so those definitely work. All right, now the factors of 39. Will one 39 work? Yes. Okay, how about two? No, we don't need to try two. 39 is not even. How about three? Well, three plus nine equals 12. Can 12 be divided by 3? Yes. So 3 is a factor of 39. If we're not sure what that is, we can divide. So we should get a whole number here without anything left over. I can share three tens into three groups, one time each. And I have nine ones left to share with the three groups. And I'm going to, I'm going to put three into each group. I have nothing left over. So 3 times 13. Okay, four will not work, 39 is even. Five will not work, 39 does not end in a zero or a five. 
Six, I know six will not work because 39 is not divisible by two and three. It's only divisible by three. So six won't work. Seven, well, I say seven times five is 35. If I add seven more, I'm at 42. So I don't say 39 when I'm counting by sevens. Eight, eight's not going to work because 39 is not even. Nine, no, because 12, three plus nine again is 12. And 12 divided by nine, no. So it's not divisible by nine. So those are the only two sets of factor pairs. One and 39, three and 13. All right, now list all the factor pairs for the number. Make a table to help. All right, so 56. So factors of 56. Well, we know 1 times 56 Will 2 work? Yes, because 56 is even. 56 divided by 2. Would be 28, 2 times 28. 2 and 28 are factors. 3. 5 plus 6 is 11. 11 divided by 3? No. So 3 doesn't work. 4. Let's try 4. It could work. 56 is even. 14. So 4 and 14 work. Five will not work because 56 does not end in a five or zero. Six will not work because it's only divisible by two, not two and three. Seven, seven times eight is 56. Nine, no, five plus six is 11. Is 11 divisible by nine? No. All right, so those are our factor pairs for 56. All right, how about 64? So the factors of 64. We know 1 times 64. We know 2 will work. 2 and 32. If you're not certain about that, you would divide 64 by 2. Will 3 work? Well, 6 plus 4 is 10. Can 10 be divided by 3? No. So 3 won't work. How about 4? Let's try 4. 64 divided by 4. I can take 1 10, leaving me 2 10s. 24 divided by 4 is 6. 6 times 4 is 24. We get nothing left over. So yes, 4 times 16 is 64. Okay, how about 5? No, we can skip 5, right? 64 doesn't end in a 5 or 0. 6 will not work because right now it's only divisible by 2. It's not divisible by 2 and 3. 7. 7 times 9 is 63. So no, 7 won't work. 8. 8 will work, right? 8 times 8 is 64. So we're just going to write 8 as, as the factors of 64 because uh, it's the same factor. Um, 9 we already eliminated because 9 times 7 was 63 and the next one would be 72. So those are the factors of 64. I'm going to go ahead and list the 8 there as a factor pair because it is a factor pair. If it was just asking me to list the factors, I wouldn't list the 8 twice. All right, page 208. 
All right, use the table to solve 14 and 15. All right, so let's make sure we understand the table. Our title is stamp sets. We have four different countries where the stamps come from. And the number of stamps, 90 for the Germany set. The Sweden set has 78. The Japan group has 63. And the Canada stamps are 25. So Dirk bought a set of, set of stamps. The number of stamps in the set he bought is divisible by 2, 3, 5, 6, and 9. Which set is it? All right, for it to be divisible by 2, it has to be an even number. So we can eliminate those two. Okay, 25 is not divisible by 2. 63 is not divisible by 2. 78 is divisible by 2, and so is 90. All right, so those two meet the two. How about three? Nine plus nothing is nine. Nine can be divided by three, so three works in 90. Seven and eight is 15. 15 can be divided by three, so three works. Five, okay, well, I can eliminate another one now, right? Five will only, can only be divided by into a number that ends in a zero or a five. So 78 can't work. So which set is it? It's Germany. Okay, I do know that it's divisible by six as well because it was divisible by two and three. And nine, nine plus nothing is nine. And nine can be divided by nine. So Germany met all of those. All right, 15. Jerry wants to put six stamps on some pages in her stamp book and nine steps, nine stamps on other pages. Explain how she could do this with the stamp set for Sweden. So 78. Okay, we have 78. And she wants to put six stamps on some pages. Six stamps on some pages, nine stamps on other pages. Well, what if we had two pages of nine? That would be 18 stamps. So two times nine is 18. That would leave me 60. 60 can be divided by six, right? 10 times. So we could also have 10 pages of six, which equals 60. Eighteen plus 60 equals 78. So two pages of nine works and 10 pages of six will work. That is one possible answer. You might be able to come up with a different answer, okay, if you keep working on it. All right, 16, use counterexamples. George said if 2 and 4 are factors of a number, then 8 is a factor of the number. Is he correct? Um, well, I would say no. For instance, 2 and 4 are factors of 20. But 8 isn't a factor of 20. I think George is getting confused with the rule for 6. That if the number is divisible by 2 and 3 then six is a factor of the number. But that doesn't work for two and four. Okay? And so when they talk about a counterexample, we just need to find one example where at least what he's saying is not true. All right, now classify the numbers. And some numbers may belong in more than one box. So divisible by five and nine. Well, first I'm gonna look for anything that ends in a five or a zero. Because a number is divisible by five if it ends in if the number ends in five. So forty-five will work. 
okay? And 45 is also divisible by 9 because 4 plus 5 equals 9. 9 can be divisible by 9. All right, how about 27? 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 can be divided by 9, so, but it's not divisible by 5. Can 9 be divided by 3? Yes, yeah, so 27 is divisible by 9 and 3. Okay, how about 54? Well, 54 is divisible by 9 because 5 plus 4 is 9. And glare right now, really bad. 5 plus 4 is 9. Okay, and 9 can be divided by 9, so it's divisible by 9, but it's not divisible by 5 because it doesn't end in a 5 or 0. Okay, so 5 plus 4 is 9, so it's also divisible by 3. 72. 7 plus 2 is 9. So then 9 is divisible by 3 and 9, so 72 will work. 81. 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 can be divided by 3 and 9, so 81 works. 84. 8 plus 4 is 12. 12 is not divisible by 9. Okay, so we've eliminated those. Now let's go to divisible by 2 and 6. So 2, it has to be an even number. So 54 could work, 72 could work, and 84. So is 54 divisible by 6? Yeah, 9 times 6 is 54, right? Because also we have 54 is divisible by 2, and we already know that 54 is divisible by 3, so 54 has to be divisible by 6. 72. I know 72 is divisible by 2, and it's also divisible by 3, so it's divisible by 6. 84. 84 is divisible by 2, but 84 is not divisible by And it's also, I'm sorry, and 84 is divisible by 3, so 6 is a factor of 84. I do, I have one number missing. I skipped over 45 for this middle section. 4 plus 5 equals 9, 9 is divisible by 3, and 9 is divisible by 9, so 45 also works. Okay, so guys, that's it for chapter lesson 5.2. So our next uh, lesson, when we talk, we'll be talking about lesson 5.3, talking about common factors. So until then, may the numbers always be in your favor.